It's going to be weird this week, folks. It's going to be weird. Hi, everybody. My name is Jim. I'm the owner of Sprague Wood Turning. Welcome to my channel. So, we're going to do something that we haven't done before on the channel this week. And I'm going to cut these pieces up. A lot of people might think that, you know, maybe it was going to turn dinosaur eggs or something out of these or nightlight. Uh, but that's not really my style. I do have a couple of night lights, but I think I want to do something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up these pieces of uh, resin that I've got. And these are pieces of resin that have been left over from pours. And I've just been pouring them into little containers and uh, building up stock so that I could actually do this video. And what we're going to do is slice them up and put them in this form like this. Great thing about this form is it's already bowl shaped. And along with all this, I want to core this piece. So I want to get four, possibly five bowls out of this when it's all done. So that's it. We're going to add some burl with this. Uh, I've got a bunch of other uh, resin that I want to do as well. And anyway, it should be either one of the cooler things you've ever seen or one of the more hideous looking things you've ever seen. We're going to find out. Anyway, that's it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And of course, any time that I can get a thumbs up on my videos will help with the analytics. And sharing with your friends on your social media platforms is an absolute bonus as well. And don't forget to comment. All right. Well, let's get to the bandsaw and, and start cutting this up and we'll figure out what we're going to do. Because I still don't really know. All right, so I've just you know, quickly figured, um, this is about five eighths of an inch. So I think what I'm gonna do is just cut these five eighths of an inch on the bandsaw. This is gonna get skinnier as it goes on the outside, but you know, I'm gonna do this one and this one as well, trying to figure out how big a pieces I can get with that. And um, I'll probably alternate them. The goal here is to get one, two, three, four pieces, usable pieces from each, uh, each one of these resin blocks. And that will give us eight total to put inside of this form. And uh, should look pretty darn cool. Let's go do that. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. Thanks for stopping by. So I decided to slice these um, resin pieces up with my three teeth per inch bandsaw blade that's used for roughing out green wood. Uh, if I had to just do this again, I probably would go with a finer blade. Uh, it would just be easier um, cleaning up on the bandsaw slash the sander, but it certainly um, cuts this resin pretty good. A little tough to see there, but the best way to get these pieces to fit that form was to use the scribe. And um, after that was done, then I went to the, the belt sander slash disc sander and just cleaned up all the rough edges. Uh, you know, it, it's still an 80 grit, but the, um, the bands all left behind some pretty aggressive marks in it. So I knew that you would see that in the final product. So that's why I decided to do that. And, you know, just marking the top of that. And instead of cutting it off, I just decided to grind it off. As you can see, it works pretty good. All right, I was thinking about using these, but I think that I'm going to save these for another project. Um, it's just these all need to be sanded and it's going to really kind of throw off the balance of the piece, I think, if I use these. So, but we certainly will use these because they're totally cool. 
Same thing with this, these are the smaller pieces. And all this other stuff too. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, this is a little piece of burl that's going to be the base of the large bowl. So that'll get glued dead center. Uh, one of these pieces, I've ground these down a little bit because this is taking up more room. Um, but I do have one that's longer than the others to fit on this one where a bit of the burl is sloped off. There, they're spaced out at about uh, four and seven eighths, somewhere around there. There, it doesn't need to be exact. Uh, I've, got you, I've got a bunch of burl pieces here. They've all been cleaned off, sanded, and you know, I'm just gonna lay these in here best I can, as tight as I can. And then um, we're actually gonna put this piece in the vacuum chamber with the resin before we go to the pressure pot. So, see if I can space these out good. <laughs> I would like to have wooden pieces right in the center. That way the base of the bowl has a piece of wood so that we can actually write on it and put the info on there and that kind of business. So that's why I kind of really want these wooden pieces to be in the center of this piece. I can't really put any glue on these because it probably will end up in the finished piece. So we're just going to have to try and maybe tape this down and to keep stuff from floating away when it's, you know, got the resin in it. And I may have to end up cutting some of these pieces off to make them fit. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Well, there you go. Everything's all taped up and ready to go. Let's mix up some resin. We're going to use Deep Cast from Designer Epoxy. I failed to mention it so far, but we're actually going to be using Box Elder Burl as the burl in this. Uh, that's why you've seen that red piece in that one piece of burl that I showed. And if you're not familiar with it, Box Elder Burl is, uh, has this red in it. Uh, it usually goes to stressed areas. And um, up here in Canada, it's called Manitoba Maple. All right, so we are going to go with Sky Blue. And along with it, we're going to add some Mother of Pearl. Again, you can get these all from Designer Epoxy. Start with three of them and see where that goes. There, that should be good. Lots of pearl effect in this one, folks. Well, that's the hope, anyway. I'm just going to transfer it into this solo cup. Easier to pour that way. I do find that when mixing in the mother of pearl, if you're doing it by hand, it uh, sometimes has a hard time mixing properly. I have no idea why, but um, all the other pigments seem to mix fairly well by hand, but uh, for some reason the mother of pearl, it seems to work better when it's mixed mechanically like with a drill. Now 
Now, this is box elder burl, and I know that it is going to eat up a ton of this resin. So, you know, the level is going to drop in this probably quite a bit. Uh, especially after we put it in under vacuum and when it goes in the pressure pot it's going to drive it into places that you know ordinarily wouldn't flow so you know um we're just going to do as much as we can but uh you know that's not bad for estimating there's maybe about half a cup left all right let's get it in the vacuum chamber Anyway, I'm just going to keep pulling the vacuum on this for about an hour, and then I'll bring it back for the next step. Well, it's been 45 minutes. Still tons of air coming out of that box elder burl. It has slowed down a bit though. Anyway, regardless of whatever we're doing here, it's certainly going to benefit the, uh, the casting. I'll give it another 15 minutes and then we'll put it in the pressure pot. All right, that's been an hour. I'm just gonna release the vacuum. I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see what's going on there. So we had a little bit of spillage, but you know, not too bad. So I'm just setting this bowl in this bucket that I've got, that way I've got a handle to put it in the pressure pot, you know, nice and level. So we, we easily took a cup of air out of, uh, well a solo cup of air out of this resin and the wood. I'm going to give it as much as I can because I know that it's going to use it up. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Alright, we're out of the pressure pot. Things didn't shrink too badly. It's going to be nice. Alright, so didn't use any mold release on this one. So, not sure how this is going to go. I certainly don't want to break this because I want to reuse it. So we'll do a, a gentle extraction. Or at least we'll try to. Anyway. If you remember, I didn't use any mold release because I needed the uh, these pieces to stay where they were. <sighs> Crap. So much for reusing that. Well, regardless, we got ourselves a nice solid casting. Let's get it on the lathe. 475. So as you've seen in that casting, the, the level probably dropped off close to an inch. And I debated on recasting it with another color. Uh, but you would have had, you know, a different color at the top. And let me know your thoughts on that if you if you think that would have been good or not. I just, this thing is busy enough as it is. And I didn't think that it needed anything else to make it even busier. That's the Hercules from uh, Hunter Tool Systems. 
And, you know, you can see, like, I, I, was, I started with the gouge where it was pretty much all wood. And then once we got down into the resin and wood combos, then I decided to uh, switch to the Hercules. And here's a shot in real time. I do find that as long as you present this tool straight onto the surface of the wood, that it will actually perform very well. You will not get any, any catches with it. I literally can hold the handle at the back with two fingers when I'm when I've got it presented to the wood straight on like that. This here, those are shearing cuts, and as you can see, as, as you keep doing it, once you get down to solid material, it just keeps getting the cut gets nicer and nicer and nicer. This is the cut that I'm referring to. My index finger is limiting how deep the, um, the tool can go into the wood and resin. And I'm just holding this at the back with two fingers. Well, what do you think of that? Pretty cool, eh? Um, I like this, how you can see the fingers from that burl coming through. I, but here, not so much. I want this to be all kind of wood, exposed wood. We gotta go down here because that's not even, uh, we can't even see the whole length of that resin, resin bar, I'll call this the resin bars. And uh, same thing here. So, I mean, we got to go a little ways, but I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. It might be the nicest one yet. I know I say that a lot. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving this thing. There is a lot going on in here. That blue is awesome. <laughs> Little resin strips. I mean, it's like I said in the opening, you know, it's, it's, it's love it or hate it. Um, I would like all of this wood on the outside to be exposed, but you know, I just, I don't want to lose any more of the size of this. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to live with this. Uh, I don't think it really detracts from the piece anyway. So, you know, I just got to put a foot on the bottom of this and then we, uh, we're going to core this piece. So hopefully I can get three bowls total out of this, but you know, so far I'm ecstatic. This is awesome. Just parting in here where the tenon will go. I usually use a bigger tenon than what um, I had on this piece, but I didn't want to take away from any more of the depth of the piece. So that's why I went with a smaller tenon. Before we move on to coring, I just want to talk about tenons and mortises. I watched uh, Ken Moon from Moon Pie Creation this morning. I have no idea if Ken watches my, my channel or not. Um, but <laughs> he, um, he was using the expanded mortise so the jaws were inside the bowl and expanded and he ended up cracking the bottom of the bowl and he ended up going through the base of the bowl as well. Uh, I moved away from mortises a long time ago just for those reasons there. And the other reason is uh, a tenon has greater clamping pressure, so you're less likely to lose a bowl out of the chuck on a tenon than you are with an expanded mortise. 
Trust me, Ken, I feel your pain. You made a great recovery on that piece and it ended up working out for you, but you know, very, very frustrating. There is no doubt about it. The other reason why I use a tenon is because, of course, I like to do shiny finishes. So a waste block gets glued on the bottom. And I also like a bowl that's elevated off the table uh, so it doesn't look um, squat and heavy looking on the table. So that's why I use uh, tenons in my work. Trust me, I lost a few pieces back when I first started wood turning and I moved away from that technique wasn't very long at all. With all that said, this is the first time that I've ever used a tenon that's all resin uh, for coring. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be able to take the abuse that wood can, but I guess we're gonna find out here. <laughs> so anyway, that's next. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. Um, like I said, great recovery on that piece, Ken. But, you know, I, we all feel your pain. Trust me, anybody that's been doing this for any length of time, we all feel your pain. Okay, so I'm just going to point out what I'm doing here right now. I've got this marked out. So there's going to be one, two, three, and then four bowls. I've got my number one knife set in right now. I'm going to come in here, take out this first little bowl here. Then I'm going to advance the rig. I'm going to still use the number one knife set. I'm going to advance it three quarters of an inch and then come in and take out the second bowl right here. Here's where I'm going to be cutting there. And then I'll switch to the number two rig and cut out the third and fourth bowl right here on this side. Um, that's the only way I can do it uh, because, well, there's just not a, small, not a smaller knife set than the number one. So that's what I'm doing. And again, this is the Core, Core Pro Cutter from Hunter Tool Systems and it has 51 cuts on it including a few resin cuts like this. So I haven't flipped the cutter yet and I'm just going to keep going with it until I feel that I need to. Anyway, let's get to it. Speed is 750. And there you have it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I guess we know. The uh, couple of things, maybe this isn't deep enough, this tenon but certainly the jaws can't get as good a grip on this that they can on wooden pieces. So that's why that happened. See, it happened to me too, Ken. <laughs> it happened to me too. But the tenon is still intact. The problem is I just can't get enough clamping pressure on it. Hmm. I don't know, I gotta think about this one. So if you remember, um, I put actually wood in the base of this because I knew that I was going to core this piece. And you know, it just goes to show that resin is not good to grab with um, the chuck. It isn't. It's too smooth. So what I'm going to do is put this back between centers. The indexing mark is there. I've actually just chiseled out that piece that was left over. Mount it back between centers. Turn this tenon down and I'm actually going to make it a little, little more uh, deeper and as long as the majority of the tenon is wood, we shouldn't have any issues from here on. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Ah. 
That'll do. A couple of things here. Uh, definitely the tenon needed to be deeper than what it was. And if the jaws on my stronghold chuck were actually dovetailed and the dovetail was turned on the foot on this bowl, this probably wouldn't have happened either. But getting it down to wood so that the, the jaws have something to bite into, I think is key in keeping pieces like this on the lathe. I still stand by my tenons. All right, so you can see I've got my tailstock extender in here. Uh, this is a number two mortise on on the, the headstock and tailstock of this lathe. I wasn't able to use it in the first bowl because, I mean, as you can see, you got very little movement. It hits up against against the tailstock. So you know, now that I have this in place, things should go all right. But I wasn't able to use it for the first core because it would have been hitting on um, on the tailstock here. So anyway, let's see how this goes. Whenever you're using, uh, whenever you're doing coring, tailstock tailstock support is crucial. So make sure if you have the ability to use it, to use it. Um, like I said, with the number one cutter, there was no way I was able to use any tailstock support in this piece. And I don't know if that would have made a difference. Uh, that resin was just really, really slippery and just the jaws couldn't grab it uh, correctly. And you know, you're gonna have days like this. Some days you're the hammer, some days you're the anvil. Now that I've got some experience coring out these pieces, uh, I do find you have to take very small bites with it before you advance the, um, the, the support. Usually you can go probably about an inch when you're doing green wood. Uh, I like to go probably no more than half an inch before I advance the, the, um, the support on, on the system. And you know, the cutter is absolutely working flawlessly. It's, uh, it's, it's an awesome piece of kit. If you don't have one, you definitely should get one if you're doing any corn. Well, I went pretty smooth after, uh, you know, screwing that first one up. All right, let's get some glue blocks in the bottom of these babies. Six seventy six seven zero.
So I've switched out the cutter for a new one on the Hercules. I, I found that it was starting to just not perform the way that it was when I first got it. So let's see how it goes now. Well, there you have it. It's a lot cleaner. Let's finish this up so we can get the sanding here. All right, so there's a big difference between the old cutter and the new cutter. Uh, with the old cutter, I had to push fairly hard to get the results that I wanted. With the new cutter, with it being sharp, it glides along a lot easier and um, doesn't create as much heat. So, you know, just keep an eye on that. You got to treat it as an expense when you're making products like this. And um, there's a huge difference. So we do have a few little voids that we have to fill. So I'm going to take this off the lathe and um, we'll, uh, we'll use some star bond on it. All right, so just like usual, we got some little spots to fill. So I'm going to use the uh, the thin CA from Starbond and of course the accelerator to uh, set it in place. I'm not going to mix up, I'm not going to tint the resin this week. Uh, I don't think there's any need for it. So I'm just going to go around and hit any of these areas that need it. Then we'll get it back on the lathe and uh, finish sanding it up here. Well, I guess I haven't even started sanding yet. That's it. Just three spots. I'll do the same thing on the other two pieces. I haven't even turned these yet, so but I'll just do a little pre-gluing. And uh, we'll see you back on the lathe. I just want to point out that how cleanly the surface is cut. Uh, if you've done any turning, now now these box holder burl pieces, they're not stabilized. And the stuff that I have, it's it's very um, it's on the punkier side. So for, for that tool to be able to cut that resin clean and to cut that burl clean, it's absolutely fantastic. Here I'm using the three and a half inch dimple disc, some spot sanding before I turn it on. Now I was only able to get 1100 on this piece. Um, ideally I want 1200 because the drill spins at 2400 RPM. Uh, and yeah, and I sand it from 60 to 800, which you'll see right here. And after that was done, of course, buffing with a triple E compound and then cleaning up with some methyl hydrate to get all the buffing compound off. All right, so this is the best part. Like I like to say, this is the first coat of wood bowl finish by General Finishes. It technically makes this piece not food safe, uh, but I mean, I can't imagine anybody even wanting to put food in this. So that's why I'm using this. And we'll see how many coats it's going to take. It's going to take at least two for sure. Uh, some of this wood is a little uh, on the softer side. Uh, the resin didn't fully penetrate it. So I don't know. We'll have to see. It might only take two. Anyway, once I get the finish on, I will pull it off and we will have a look at it. <laughs> look at that. Well, love it or hate it, I mean, it is colorful. And that pearl on the back side, I mean, that is crazy amazing. I'm sure there's going to be lots of people that will probably say, 
this piece would have looked better without these uh, these resin strips in it. You know, it looked kind of like a, an ocean and plant or an ocean and land masses. Uh, but man, very cool. So what I'll do is I'll do up the other two bowls and I'll just bring in when I put the first coat on so we can look at them. Don't have as much of the uh, the blue in there. Still, there's bits and pieces of it. I put this electrical tape on here because when I was sanding, the sandpaper was heating up the glue and it was spreading onto the bowl, so that's why it's on there. If you're curious, second core coming right up. And there's the small one. Now this one here, when this come off of the lathe, or when we are coring, it left a little divot in there. So I filled that in with the CA glue and a little bit of pigment, and it matches up pretty decent. You'll never know unless I told you, like I just did. And there's the back side. It's small. It's not nothing to write home about, that's for sure. A little red piece there from that box elder burl. Pretty cool. Uh, be a nice little ring dish or anything like that. All right. See you tomorrow. Using the Tripoli e buffing compound again between coats, I find this is the best way to uh, level out these finishes before the next one goes on. Good morning. This is the second coat of uh, wood bowl finish. It's looking like it's going to take three for sure. The box elder burl is really sucking this up. The darker parts in the wood, that's where the, the resin has really penetrated into the wood. Uh, but the other parts that are still quite light in appearance are uh, probably going to drink up a lot more finish. If there needs to be more coats, it'll be the same process, the Triple E, and then um, methyl hydrate, and then I will put the next coat on. So we'll see you at the end when I'm doing bottoms. The wood looks shiny. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it requires another coat. I'm assuming that it probably will. I mean, that is crazy good. All right, see you at the end when we're doing foot. Well, all right, let's have a last little look at these gorgeous bowls. So this one ended up being 10 by 3. Absolutely colorful. If color is your thing, this is the bowl set for you. Uh, just the pearl in there, just that mother of pearl, the extra steps with that really, really brings us alive. The... Um, it's just, I don't know, it's amazing. You know, you kind of look like islands. Another spot here that's really cool as well. Anyway, it's awesome. Here's the bottom. Still need one more coat of finish on the very bottom. And what I did was, I just sanded the 800. I didn't buff the very bottom of this. I um, And then I was able to write on it with the pen. This, <laughs> this, burl it's on the very bottom it's it's got so much resin in it that it's pretty much just resin so um when i put on the next coat i'll probably just take a white scotch bright pad and just try and clean things up a little bit there's a couple little bubbles that are there and I'll, I'll anyway i'll take those all out of there and put the next coat to finish on and it will be crisp and clean so that's the first one the second one ended up being seven and a half by two again really really colorful the um, the great thing about these resin bars these pieces of burl 
up against them look like they're meant to be there like they're kind of natural looking so you know that way you don't have to kind of round off these these uh, burl pieces to make them fit uh, to make them look like they're supposed to be there if you know what I mean uh, here's the very bottom of this one again it still needs another coat of finish uh, and these did take three coats of wood bowl finish by general finishes last but not not least this one's five and a half or sorry five by one inches tall still a fantastic little piece no risen bars in this one it's a little skinnier than the other ones so it's more translucent there's the very bottom and when this came off the lathe I filled in that one little spot there tried to match the color up uh, you know <clears throat> big difference when I changed out the cutter on the Hercules uh, so keep that in mind if you if you know you, if you have one and if you don't have one and you're doing these projects I really recommend getting one because it, it's a fantastic tool all right well that's it uh, so what I'm going to do I want to keep this set together and if you're curious, the way I value this set, the large bowl is $350. The smaller bowl, the, the next larger bowl is $200. And then this little guy is $50. So $600 for the set. And that, those are Canadian funds, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at the, air, the date of this airing, I'm going to leave this set together for one week. And it's going to be a first come, first serve basis send me an email to spraguewoodturning at gmail.com and basically whoever gets a hold of me first and says yep it's mine it'll be yours and of course there'll be shipping on top of that and if it's sold in Canada there'll be taxes on top of that as well tax man's got to get his share um yeah so anyway let me know down below in the comments what you think about this week's video and anyway after a week I'll start parting it out after that if it doesn't sell so I forgot to add that so yeah comments please leave one down below uh, don't forget about our sponsors designer epoxy sandpaper.ca starbond adhesives and of course hunter tool systems all your discount codes are in the description down below so please check them out all right so next week we're actually going to do an urn and we're going to do it out of the box out of burl uh, and, and if everything goes right it should be a really spectacular piece so make sure you come on back for that um, I should also mention that I do have business Facebook and Instagram at Sprague Wood Turning. And if you want to pop over there and follow me there, that would be fantastic as well. Sometimes I kind of put up little photos of what's going on through the week uh, just to pique your interest. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. I'm done talking. Till next week, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell. We'll see you next week.